Oh yeah, and it's time for the game sports show, the Twin Sioux's only local, regional, and national sports show. Podcasted, broadcasted, radio casted, or TV casted. That's not bad. Okay, sure. I think you made up a couple of those words there, but we'll, we'll go with it. I did. Nonetheless, we're inside on TV studios for well, Tuesday edition. Festive it is. Very too. festive. We got the new logo. Some green and red lights. Oh, it's fantastic. Because it is the season. And you know what? I am feeling the Christmas joy, especially outside. It definitely feels like Christmas. Ugh. Ugh. Hopefully those ODRs open up soon. Oh, though. the ODRs. You should open one in the back where you can have a little game sports show logo out there and have a little competition. Ooh, draft yeah. our teams. Why not? Let's get Craig Speaking Hartsburg. We're going to talk about that, the teams that we think for players. Ooh. That are the best players in the league. Mm. We got an action pack show, as always, here on the game sports show. And here in the first part, we're going to be jumping in and talk a little bit of the NHL, uh, yep. obviously, to mm -hmm. open, mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. some Nathan McKinnon Ugh. discussion, as this has been the highest talked about topic in the kind of sports in the last week in hockey range anyways, because a lot of it pokes towards, let's say, specific players, if you will. And then myself and Alex are going to be choosing our top players in mm -hmm. terms of positions. Mm -hmm. And then later on the show, we're going to jump into some World Junior discussion, Greyhounds, LSSU, NOJHL. We also got a, a bonus wrestling match mm -hmm. that we're going to show in there as well. Mm -hmm. And we're also going to be jumping into some In the Pocket as well. Of course, a staple of the game sports show. Definitely in the pocket. That was actually when the original segment started back in 2015, and we're going to end with that. That will lead us nicely into our show tomorrow from mm -hmm. Sports Center. We also had our show yesterday on ESPN 1400. Myself, Scott E.J. and Butch. Fantastic show. We have tomorrow's show, as I mentioned, and Thursday from Northern Superior Brewing Company. You can check all that out on our ESPN stream, as well as our game sports show website and Podbean page. And obviously, check out our YouTube channel with On TV for all the previous editions that we have had we're gonna have two more weeks of the show then we're gonna be on holidays Woo! alex let's do it the 23rd of december until the 7th of january mm -hmm. a little bit of time off to enjoy some family time and some tis season time a little bit of time not to look at these two ugly mugs for a little bit good looking mug meh mug eh, i'll go i'll mediocre and meh I'll i kind of miss my mustache again still for time about mustaches uh but we got lots and lots to talk about so we're gonna jump into it and we'll start it with our hockey talk And getting into that, Nathan McKinnon. I'm not excited for this conversation. Okay, Nathan Let's McKinnon says he will take less to stay with his team and so he can win, so they can build a team, and just so he can win with that group. Now, let me remind you, listeners, viewers, both, make sure I say mm -hmm, both, mm -hmm. <laughs> name some players that did this, you'll say. Hmm. Sidney Crosby took $8.7 million, and he still keeps that, okay? And Boston, and they're having a heck of a time together. Look at Pasternak, and yes, no, they haven't won a cup, okay? It's a early time. I get it. They haven't, but this is a very good hockey team that has success year in and year out. Bergeron, Marchand, Pasternak, McAvoy, Chara, Rask, all these players, the nuclear core of guys have stayed together at an affordable rate. Now let's go to another team that, take my whole side off here for a second, put my fan hat on, Toronto Maple Leafs. Hey, Mitch Marner, brother, Matthews, where are you in this equation? Hi, uh, first contract out, I want, I want 11.634. 11 you know why? Because I got drafted the first overall in 2016, I'm number 34. Marner, I'm going to get 10 because I think I'm as good as Antarmi Pernarin because I got the same amount of points that he had. Okay, in less years, okay. And last I checked, uh, I... I don't think Panarin didn't play with John Tavares in one of his contract years, okay? John Tavares did deserve $11 million because he earned it, okay? He's not really earned it so far this year. No offense, he's been hurt though. Nonetheless, okay, $40 million, mm -hmm. okay, towards players. Morgan Riley's due for a payday in a couple years. Mm -hmm. Frederick Anderson's due for a couple pay for a nice payday. Let mm -hmm. me tell you, he's the only reason why they have a winning record, quote, sort of, at this current point. Depends how you look at it. Depends yeah. how you look at it. If you don't, yeah. if you include the overtime losses, they ain't a winning record. Nonetheless, Alex, Ow. Nathan McKinnon's gonna take yeah. the pay cut. Ow. Randon took less than Marner. I was gonna say, are, are we even talking about Nathan McKinnon still? Yeah, so sorry. Yeah. The thing with Nathan McKinnon is, at the time, he didn't take a pay cut. He took exactly what the league had suggested for a player around that. It was just the cool thing to say at the time when he was in Toronto and they asked oh, him about it. Oh, yeah. coincidence. Right? Oh, what's he going to say? You want to rattle up some Leafs fans? The best fans in the world <laughs> to get going. Look at us. We're going insane as the season goes on. 
McKinnon, no, of course he's going to say that. What's he going to say? No, I'm actually going to take my team to the bank, cash in on every last <laughs> cent that the they have. Yeah, no, he's not going to say that. He's going to say something that obviously his team and his fans are going to like and take a little jab at the Leafs. At the time, he only had, what, three 60-point seasons under his belt when he scored? Six and a half million then? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense for a guy. Pasternak, that's also another contract that at the time made perfect sense. It's not their, well, I mean, it is their fault for breaking out the next season because they are that good. Mm -hmm. But that's not like the team was going, okay, you're going to take a pay cut because we need to win. Crosby, a little bit different. Malkin, the same with those other two guys I just mentioned. They're not taking pay cuts for their team. It was just at the time, that's the salary cap has went up so much. Ah. At their time, but do you think Nathan McKinnon will take a pay cut? No, I don't think Nathan McKinnon will take a pay cut because he's going to be one of the top three players in the league like he already is right now for the next duration of his contract, however the hell long that is. And when it comes up, he's going to make bank. And I guarantee you he's going to make more than the Matthews contract right now because he's better than Matthews and he's signing it when the league's going to have more money for more players. So how much is he signing for when he signs? So that's four years away, mind you. Four years away, he's going to sign for... Cap goes up at least $200 million. Do you want to say that, maybe? Uh, well, that might wow, be a stretch. That, 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 that might, that be, might a be a stretch. You might be Let's touching 90 um, in four years. No, maybe not. No, I can see him easily eclipsing... McDavid, easy, easy, easy. So he's easy. making okay. That's sort of been the question. He's making more than McDavid is easy, then, and easy, contract. easy, easy. I think he makes the same as Matthews. I'll say no. I think he's no. gonna take two million less. No, two Mc, million. McKinnon's too good. McKinnon is too he good. Is too he good. knows his worth. He, he knows is too his good. worth. Watch him. Do, do you watch him? I have him oh, on my he's, fantasy he's fantastic. team. Fantastic. Somebody traded me McKinnon fantasy. Oh, are they ridiculously yeah. lost their minds? Or I'm what? looking at you right now, Brandon. But yeah. anyway, no yeah. offense. A little bit of offense, but yeah, no. McKinnon is gonna. Take his team, not to the cleaners, but he's going to make more than Matthews in all of these contracts because that's just the way the league goes. Years go on, the league does better, it gets more money, best players get paid more. It's all about percentage of the cap. Sue native Colin Miller, okay, I asked, okay. we asked him last year on the show, okay, he, we asked him who was the hardest player to play against. And everyone, obviously, he went the two routes saying McDavid, Crosby, right? But he, he said those are obviously players, but he said the toughest player to play against is Nathan McKinnon. By far, Nathan McKinnon, okay? His way his agility is, his mm -hmm. footwork, his size, his core strength, which is a big deal. Okay, if you look at the people that have played with Crosby, Tyler Candy, friend of the show and mm -hmm. also friend of mine, saying that when he used to shower next to Crosby, sorry to bring that up, you guys have got a thick lower body, okay, in the legs, okay, he's got big I, trunk. I was tree watching trunk. his spitting chiclets when they were going golfing. It was McKinnon and Crosby. Yeah, oh, not, a big, not a big deal. No, that guy could kick down a door easy. Easy, big toe. His legs are massive. Tree trunks. Absolutely. Now, Why are McKinnon, we talking about Crosby? What do you legs? think? What do we think about Nathan McKinnon? How much is he going to take his next contract, or is that too soon to tell? And you think he's going to make Matthews money? Yeah, I think he's going to take four years take, time. Take Matthews no, money. No chance. Not make. That guy can make eighteen million in his next contract well, if he wanted to. Nah. Might be a little high, but yeah, I'm just saying. I'm saying right now. Okay, if the cap goes up, projected <sighs> that it's supposed to do. So. What we're going to jump into next, though. Okay, we're done with McKinnon. Good. Yeah, I'm going to transition. I, I did not even want to. Yeah, I, I kind of I can tell that you were like, nah. You I, know, I'm on edge know. about this contract talk. We're going to talk about more on Thursday. All right. Maybe a little bit. So we get, I want to okay. get some other people's Fine. perspective, but don't hesitate to comment below on that. We had our picks for who <laughs> we think the best center, mm -hmm. left wing, right wing, two defensemen. And based on these two defensemen, it's offensive and defensive mm -hmm. defensemen. And then goalie and coach. If we had to pick a line to send on the ice, Based on those positions, mm -hmm. okay, simply based on those positions, I cannot stress even anymore that Alex and I picked this team. And I'm going to go to Alex's team first. Cool, let's do it. And uh, we're going to put on the screen. Alex, explain your picks here. Okay, well, let's start at the top. Connor McDavid, do I have to say anything? Or is that just, we can just continue I after Connor I thought I'd McDavid? be number one there. Well, yeah. <laughs> All right, Dave McKegg's the, the one B to McDavid's one A. How, how's that? Yikes. Right wing, Patrick Kane. The guys put up ridiculous seasons consistently, regardless if the Chicago Blackhawks are good, regardless if they're bad. Easy money, 90-point seasons in the bank almost every season. Alex Ovechkin, best goal scorer in NHL history. Easy. I'll say that. Better than Wayne Gretzky because look at the era they're playing in. A little bit different. This, this era, you actually have to pick the puck up off the ice. A little bit different game. <laughs> Uh, Victor Hedman for our <laughs> defensive defenseman because what I mean if you want a perfect solid defenseman you're going Victor Hedman 
Now, for the offensive side, I actually picked Brent Burns. I mean, he's been more consistent as opposed to John Carlson, who's had some prolific seasons this season and last season. But Burns has put up 60 to 70-ish points the last four or five seasons, which that's a very consistent defenseman. I, maybe a couple seasons ago, I would have put Eric Carlson there, but I feel like he slipped a couple rungs yeah, since. Yeah, especially moving to San Jose. Right? A little bit. Yeah, it's yeah. been a conversation. Yeah, and Brent Burns this season. He's having a bit of a rough season, but that whole team's having a bit of a rough season. My goaltender, Mark mm. andre Fleury. If you can bring a expansion team from... 31st in the league to the Stanley Cup Finals, you are clearly doing something right. And you don't need to fire him up. Kind of like what you're going to need to do with Dave's pick. And now my coach as well, Rick Tockett. Interesting pick, actually. That's probably the most. Right. And I was going a lot more with consistently in seasons that have been proven for a while. But Rick Tockett, since becoming the head coach of the Arizona Coyotes, they've increased every season in their wins. This season, they are ridiculous. I think they're the lowest for uh, goals against in the entire league. Second lowest, excuse me, to the New York Islanders. And, like, you're going to tell me a team with Darcy Kemper is going to be that high tied with the Edmonton Oilers where they are for the, for the division lead? No, I would have laughed in your face if you thought Darcy Kemper would have done that. But nope. Rick Tockett's done a great job at getting his veterans and his young talent to work together in a perfect harmony. I like that. See, the, what do you think of Alex's picks? Don't hesitate to comment below and give him feedback, positive or negative. Now, I know that I'm going to get some different opinions on mine, and you're going to notice something about mine. Dave's picks, there is not one Maple Leaf on there. Okay, so obviously I'm not being biased. Obviously Connor McDavid. I had a very hard time not choosing Nathan McKinnon or even Sidney Crosby. Yeah. Here, yeah. okay. I kind of went with this with my mentality of right now if I had to pick. I like Alex's viewpoint of consistency. Mm -hmm. However, center Connor McDavid... On the left wing, Artemi Panarinen. I, I went with this because of what he's been able to do when he moved to Columbus and what he has done right now with New York. He's having a very strong year. Especially for a weak and, New York team, And too. he did start in Chicago, obviously. Mm -hmm. But moving on to play and have more of a prominent role, he has succeeded as a winger. Patrick Kane, for the same reasons that Alex said, he's, been, he's one of the best goal yeah. scorers. He's an entertainer. It's amazing. Kale McCarr for my offensive defenseman. As of right now, yeah, this kid that. is going to be a stud, okay? I'm going to tell you, right now, this kid is going to be a stud. And I went with right now. I know I had a lot of temptation to go John Carlson. Mm -hmm. I even had temptation to go Morgan Riley a oh, little bit. Not this but, season. But not, especially not this year. No, definitely but Kale McCarr, just the way his speed is, his presence with the puck at a young age, I love to see what he's already doing on that ice. Victor Hedman is defense defenseman. He's also awarded defenseman yeah. already. He, he is the best defensive just based on his size and his work as well. You, we want defensive defenseman. You're getting him. I also had a hard time not choosing this Hedain Chara, but I'm not back in 2009 right now. Wow. Carey Price, my goaltender. No. Best goalie in the world. No. I don't care game no. based on what's happening right now. This poor Carey Price, you put him on Colorado right now, you put him in a position where a team actually really cares about playing in front of him. No offense. This goalie would still be the number one goalie in the league. Barry Trotz, what goes without saying, he goes to win the cup, okay, and then he moves to the island, the team that has one of the worst rosters, I thought, and now they're one of the best teams in the league who absolutely took care of Tampa Bay last night, thank you from Toronto fans, but the New York Islanders have Barry Trotz, Lou Lamorello, what a connection that it has been, Barry Trotz is the best coach in National Hockey League based on what he's done and today because what he's currently doing. Now, which one of my picks was the most surprising to you and were you just absolutely like, no chance? Good question. Rick Tockett. Really? I go by Price, your easy. coach. I, I, I even had a little bit of difference between Brett Burns, but I get your statistic about previously, previously what yeah, he's yeah, done, yeah. though. Mm -hmm. And that's been myself and Alex's picks. Let us know what you think below of the best current players. If you want to throw your name in the hat, don't hesitate to follow us on the Game Sports Show Facebook and Instagram at the Game Sports Show. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we got some more hockey talk here on the game. Welcome back to the Game Sports Show here for some more hockey talk because it's definitely the season. Tis the season, as obviously, as you can see as well. We're at Christmas time, but obviously, there's still football going on. There's basketball, there's still lots of sports, but we got lots of hockey content definitely to get to on the show. And to continue that, Alex, the World Juniors. Nothing says the holiday season 
like the Boxing World Day is the first official game. Oh my goodness. As always. Yep, as always. And yeah, actually this year I was kind of surprised. I was looking at the, the schedule and usually they do like a big game on New Year's Eve, right? Yep, like US, Russia. They're playing the Czech Republic. And I went, interesting matchup. What? Why? It's in the Czech Republic. Duh. <laughs> Duh. There, you figured that one out. I did. Oh, I put yourself. it. Two and two makes four. Put it together myself. There you go. Smart tie. Smart, smart everything. Got my, got my Christmas tie. Jacob, can you bring it back to this camera just so I can show off my tie a little bit? Look, look at that. that. Look at that Santa tie. Santa and his reindeer. I'm feeling it today. I'm I feeling the I Christmas like that. spirit. I didn't get the memo on the tie usage, no. unfortunately. But the World Juniors. Alexis Lafreniere is a Sherlock to go number one. Easy. And... Is he the best player in this tournament going right now? Well, I mean, that's hard to say because he is young. You're going to be going up against 20-year-olds, but if you even look at some of the highlights that are on your screen right oh, now, hold on. like right between the legs makes it look like it's nobody's business. Now, he played in the World Juniors last year. He played in five games and only managed to post one goal, but he was going into that at the oh. same age McDavid played as a 17-year-old. Now, you can hear the sounds Dave's making, absolutely disgusted and, and just... Mesmerized that backhand at the same time. was absolutely more filthy than through the legs. I yeah. almost want to say that. And is he going to be the best player in this tournament? He can be easily, but he's also 18, so he's going to have a couple years of a couple years of age ahead of him as well in this tournament. I can watch these videos all yeah. day with him. Like this kid is fantastic. Detroit, Ottawa. Well, maybe not Ottawa, the way you guys are playing. You guys might move up the standings a little bit too much. Okay, Detroit fans, I love seeing the comment about Lafreniere. This, this, this particular fan put a meme of the Detroit Red Wings bench celebrating after a goal, and it was about a post about Lafreniere. And I uh, okay, okay, don't yeah, get yeah. your hopes up, okay? Don't get your hopes up, okay? But let me tell you, Lafreniere is going to be something to watch, but the whole team is something to watch. Yeah, the Canadians right now are betting odds, the favorite yeah. to win the World Juniors. Yeah. But, I mean, odd makers also want you to put money down so they give you the teams that have the most People hype around them. People are so. forgetting about Sweden's decor. People are forgetting about the States. People are forgetting about yep. Russia. Like, these powerhouse well, teams are... Yaroslav Askarov. I don't know Ask what... away! <laughs> what is your obsession with these this, foreign goalies? This kid, Yaroslav Askarov, is going to be something. Okay, Leaf fans, hear me out. I'm gone for this I, one. I, I, I'm gone for out. this one. I am not I a part of this I love Frederick opinion. Anderson. I want him to re-sign in Toronto, and Toronto should re-sign him, period. Okay? But let's say Dubas approaches him in the offseason, and, and Frederick wants to test the free agency market after next year. I don't think you deal with that controversy. I think you maybe think about trying to, if you're at the sixth, fifth pick, he might even go top three this goalie. Oh, come on. He no, might, he's not. Uh, he's, no, maybe not. You're right. Maybe three is a little too much. Oh, yeah, but you this listening is definitely to the top ten. Definitely a top ten going to this draft. Delusional Leafs fan. Okay. If you know you're not re-signing Frederick Anderson, for whatever reason, I want him back. I cannot stress you want him back as a Leaf fan. I would like him back as a Leaf fan. But if you know you cannot re-sign him, you trade in the draft Kyle Dubas, and you bring in Yaroslav Askarov. You trade Astro you trade Anderson, just like Lou Lamorello traded Corey Schneider for Bo Horvat, who is now the captain of the Vancouver Canucks. If you know you can't resign Frederick Anderson, you get Yaroslav Askarov on this team and you go free agency to bring in a veteran goal. Corey Schneider and Frederick Anderson shouldn't be in the same sentence unless you're talking about who's not, okay, polishing so Anderson's skates before so the Schneider game. So Schneider goes for the ninth overall pick. What do you think Anderson's going to go for? Yeah, no, no, no. Well, his if contract's, you know you're not gonna his contract's up at the end of the year, so what does it matter? You can't trade him at the draft anyway. You You'd have to trade him before the trade deadline because he's not on a contract after no, the season. No, that's after next year. you got to trade him at this draft. Askarov gets drafted this year. Yes, but Anderson's contract is up at this season. Next year. Are you sure? Next year, 100%. He's on his, he has two years left, this year and next year. I'm looking it up right now. I don't believe you. Con continue, because I'm still I'm still blown away. So, but I'm just saying, if you know you're not going to sign somebody, you have to consider making a move. And I love Yaroslav Askarov. Ask me why. Top three Because he's Askarov. Pick. Okay, this kid's sick. And then you go in the free agency route and you sign a good goaltender to last next year. Yaskarov plays a year. One, then he comes up the following year and the kid's going to be a stud. I'm telling you right now. But Anderson, I hope you come back. I want you to win the cup in Toronto. I'm just saying. I want you back. And I was right. Eh? I knew it. I, could, I couldn't find it, to I be was honest. right. He has one more year left on his deal at $5 million. But now, World Juniors is what we were talking about. Watch <laughs> out for Russia, Finland, <laughs> States. But the World Juniors, Canada is the favorite. But Sweden's decor is what I'm watching. Broberg. Yeah. Or the pick Sandine, if he goes, I think he is. 
maybe. Uh, but they have a very good mm -hmm. decor in Sweden, which is crucial to the team. Well, Team Canada can still get better, too. They've got guys like Bowen Byram and Bar Barrett Hayden, guys that can get sent back from their big yep. NHL clubs. I hope that happens. And, I mean, obviously we're going to give a little bit of love to our boy Barrett for playing for the Greyhounds here, but I don't think there's a chance that he doesn't play for that World Junior team. Right? He he's getting scratched. He's, yeah, he's playing like 10 minutes a night, 12 minutes a night. He's getting scratched. He's in and out of the lineup. Go get that guy in the spotlight. Go get that guy under the limelight. First nine minutes for the World Junior Team. That's going to be way better for his development than sitting eating popcorn and pretzels in the press box. Definitely. Moving on from the World Juniors, we'll talk about that more on Thursday as well. The Sioux Greyhounds sweeping the road trip this weekend. Let's go, boys. We've got two more topics to get to before we go to break. Wow. But the Sioux Greyhounds uh -huh. sweep the road trip Thursday, defeating Niagara 5-1. to one. Friday, defeating Erie 2-1. to one. And also Sunday, defeating the Steelheads 6-3. to three. They play Wednesday against Sudbury. Let's go. They play Friday against Owen Sound. Oh. And then they play Sunday against Erie. Not bad. It wasn't even on the graphic and he knew it. That's good. I didn't even look at the sheet. You can test that. I can test okay. Test that. The, all these games at home. Make sure you get out to support. And also you can hear the games. I'm pointing my ears for absolutely no reason. Or watch them on TV. But on the radio side, to our good friend Jerry Liscombe Jr. on Rock 101. The Hounds sweeping the road trip, my friend, and going into a big weekend. Now, if anybody was there for that London Knights game, I'm going to take off my analyst hat and put on my fan hat and okay. say, that was easily the worst ref the game. Christmas hat, if you will. Oh, thank you. The, easily the worst refereeing I have ever seen yep. in any hockey game, we, in any league. At, at, it could have been four-year-olds. It could have been a hundred. worse than last year's blown call for the Saints and Rams? Oh, no, it would be like that, but if you had like 20 of those calls throughout the game. Nice. So I think maybe John Dean goes, all right, look how close. We should have beaten the London Knights. So we should beat the rest of these three. These three nobody teams. Not nobody teams. They're actually pretty decent teams. They're all good teams. Quinn Byfield and Sudbury are very excited to watch. Yeah, he's not there right now. But anyway, they went out and they freaking destroyed those three teams. Convincing yeah. fashion. Only letting in four goals over the three games. Ethan Taylor not playing much also. But we'll jump into that on Thursday. We'll see how things go on Wednesday against Sudbury. And the last thing I'll bring up before we go to our break, LSSU men's hockey dropped to 5-14 and 14 after losses to MSU this past weekend. Youch. They play this weekend against Bowling mm -hmm. Green at home. You can listen to them on 99.5 Yes FM, which is also another partner station with our ESPN, the ESPN 1400 Sovereign Communications. But LSU is really struggling, and we'll get to that a bit more on Thursday as well. But with the Lake Superior State University Athletics, so much promise going this year. But they've had a very tough schedule, and they haven't been able to continue at this current point. But he's Alex. I'm, I'm Alex. Dave. That's Dave. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we've got some more hockey talk with the NOJHL, and also a little bit of Russia news we're going to throw in there as well. Be right back. Welcome back to the Game Sports Show. Dave, Alex, here inside on TV Studios, Twin Cities' only local, regional, and national sports show. Radio, TV, and every kind of perspective. Mm -hmm. That's what I should have said from the beginning. That's, yeah, that's uh, much better than what did Much you better than when I think it through. It's just when I just let it flow out. Yeah, so much better. You didn't have to make up any words No, that we time. didn't. Continuing with local recap. <laughs> the Sioux Thunderbirds were in action this past weekend. They defeated the Eagles and the uh, Lake Wildcats in decisive fashion, man. 4-1 to one over the Eagles, but the game that was in decisive fashion, 11-0 victory over the Wildcats on Sunday. Thunderbirds leap in third place in the Western Conference with that. That is a very big beatdown, if you will, Alex. Uh, Elliot Lake, uh, on behalf of the entire Sault Ste. Marie population and the Thunderbirds organization, I have no affiliation with them, but I'm going to apologize on their behalf because... Uh, Wow. Definitely. Thunderbirds are riding the hype. They're obviously, you, you play until the last whistle. The Thunderbirds were very good with their uh, character, respect. They just kept playing the game. It's not like they celebrate. It's not like they ran up the score. They just kept playing the game. They scored they a touchdown with an extra point and then a field goal. Yeah. And they kept shooting the puck and playing the game hard, which is fantastic in a game. The Eagles were also in action. They dropped two this weekend, losing to the Birds and to the Blind River Beavers. Mm -hmm. And the Beavers also played uh, this past weekend. They defeated the Lake Wildcats and the Eagles. 
Okay, with the win, the Beavers are now first in the NLJHL's West. The Eagles dropped to fourth behind the Sioux Thunderbirds given this past weekend. Not third and fourth. We're going to see a lot of change. Thunderbirds and Eagles are going to flop. Race side, Balfour, and uh, the Beavers are going to be doing a lot of flip flop. Yeah, I think only one point separate both three and four and one yeah. and two right now. And so. it's fantastic. And whoever goes in these playoffs, the first four, it doesn't matter where you play. So this is basically going for home ice advantage. But you also have. Teams that are just fantastic. The parity in this league, the Thunderbirds, great organization, greatly ran, great players, uh, respect into the community. Same with the Eagles, same with the Beavers, race side. Everyone is loved by their community, especially in Blind River. They're really loved. Okay, I can tell you from personal experience. <clears throat> but nonetheless, the Beavers have been such a strong year and leading goal scorer, over 70 points in 32 games. Almost has Alexis Lafreniere stats. <laughs> See how I said it's Lafreniere? Just gonna get that right. I don't like when they say some names wrong on television, but that's not what we're gonna get it's into. It's not like right you're now. perfect with your names all the time. I'm not. I'm so bad with my names. See, all the exactly. Time. Oh, those. I'm I'd, so bad. Say, I'd say that guy is name right. Uh, yeah, that's okay, true. Dude. Good point. But that's the NLJHL recap, <laughs> and you can check out the Thunderbirds, Eagles, and Beavers website for games going into this weekend. And on Thursday, we'll jump into that as well. Due to time constraints, we're gonna move forward to two other topics for going to break. Okay. One thing that I want to jump into. Yep. Was NCAA. Mm-hmm. OHL, WHL, and the QM, JHL. Mm -hmm. Different age groups, different leagues, mm -hmm. obviously. What league is better for your preparation to get into professional hockey? Alex. I think if you were to look at the stats on how players make their way to the NHL, you would see probably more players from the CHL going over into the draft or getting signed or getting exposure. Yep. But I don't think, like, that's not me saying at the same time the NCAA is no way you can't do it that way. Jonathan Taves, Tyler Bozak, I'm a Leafs fan. Of course, that's the one name that's going to jump out to me. It's just some players need a little bit more time, whether it's their body developing still or getting a little bit bigger, a little bit more size. Or maybe you need another set of eyes to look at you to realize what you can really bring. It, I don't, I would think if you're going to go based off statistics that you would probably see, say, CHL just on the fact that more players go. But I, at the same time, I think the NCAA is just as good as opportunity as the CHL. It is. And that's where NCAA is not as physical of a game as it is in junior hockey. Believe it or not, people may not agree with that. But the physicality aspect, people say it's a more Canadian style. That is very, I don't like that term. It's yeah. a, I'd say North Americans much more uh, deliberate to stay because I think uh, now hitting is put into place much later than mm -hmm. what it used to be. But I think the games are different based on what you are as a player. I think if you are um, a hard-nosed player, someone who is a late bloomer, mm -hmm. NCAA is the way to go. Where in the junior level, if you've been a prominent hockey player your entire life with great speed, all-around talent, the CHL is what's for you because you can get drafted at a young age. The NCAA gives opportunity for a lot of individuals that are older, later bloomers, or mm -hmm. just to mature as a person and complete education. People forget that a lot of players in the OHL, do they finish education? Certainly. Oh. You know, Darnell Nurse was one who at who attended Algoma University. Mm -hmm. Okay. But you have NCAA that has that pays for that schooling. It gives you that extra initiative. Look at all the players that have come from there. Johnny Goudreau, a lot of players. It doesn't really matter where you come from. If I had to choose, yeah. obviously the CHL is more ideal because you start there younger. Uh, it's more of a uh, North American, or sorry, should I should say North American introduction with the physicality. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, you still have the NCAA that it allows you to look at your future as well as your future as a hockey player. Yeah, and it's not always the big tough guys that are going to get noticed in the NCAA too. I mean, Jack Eichel, that was a name that slipped my mind. And as soon as I said Tyler Bozak before I said Jack Eichel, I went, come on, come on, Alex, drink a V8 mm -hmm. or something. There's a lot. So to give you an answer, I don't have one. I don't have one either. I'm going to be that that weird and say I don't got one for you. How's okay. that for How's your that? If you think analytics. this league is better, I don't really have one. I think either or is the way to go. Alex, we're going to take another break. When we come back, we're going to have a wrestling match come on. Yep. And people are probably wondering, why aren't we talking about Russia being banned from the Olympics? Guess what? We're saving that for Thursday, just Ooh. so you know. That will be talked about on Thursday. I want to get a lot of opinion on that because we have to get expanded to that due to time constraints. We don't have that time to jump into, so we're going to save that for Thursday. But we do have time to bring you a nice bonus wrestling match that we know you enjoyed last week. So let's enjoy another one this week. Dave, uh, Alex and Dave are going to take a break. When we come back, we have In the Pocket here on the Game Sports Show.
given us. Yes, here we go. Here is Norman, Norman Harris. This, there are children in the seats here. What kind of music am I listening to right now? I'm not trying to be serenaded. I'm trying to watch two guys beat each other up. We're, we're bumping and grinding here with the CWE, Norman Harris, the Hamburg heartthrob. Come on. I mean, when the only thing that I can find about you in your wrestling career is about how many hearts you break, and I can actually go and look at your opponent's stats and championships, I already know who's going to win this match. I don't think Norman's got a shot. At well, us. I don't know about that. We will have to see. Norman Harris, I guess, is... What is he doing over there? That is to be seen and not talked about I at this point. I think somebody needs to wash that scarf. I think that scarf is very happy right now. Wouldn't you be happy around the neck of Norman Harris? I would be disgusted. I would leave, I'd get up out of my seat and leave the building immediately. Well, that, <laughs> oh my word. Look at what he's doing here. Is he? Oh, what, was that entrance not good enough for you, Norman? Hmm. I will introduce him one more time, just in case you all didn't hear it the first time. He's from Hamburg, Germany, weighing 110 Kilograms. Oh, we needed to add in grams. Kilograms. What's the difference? Oh, I would have to agree with the fans here tonight. Wow. Who is correct. The fans not happy with the heartthrob. Well, I mean, like I said, if all you are is pretty and you can't fight, why are you wrestling? Well, that's to be seen tonight. We will see if he can fight, ladies well, and gentlemen. Well, I guess you had a wrestling career. You weren't pretty and you couldn't fight. That's right. I was not pretty. And I could fight. Come on now. Okay, you know what? We're not so bad. I'll give you that. That's right. Wow. The kids do not like him here. They do not. This crowd is riled up right now over Norman Harris. This is fantastic to see. Hey, watch our cameras. Those things are expensive. Cameras are expensive, but to the heartthrob, it doesn't matter because he's got money galore. He's got the ladies. He's got everything that he wants. doesn't matter to well, him. Why don't he's you just going to model then. Why don't you go take that scarf down a runway for Calvin Klein? Get out of here. And I think the fans are agreeing with that. The you fans are chanting. Suck, chance. Yep, you still <laughs> suck. He is trying to get over with the crowd here, people. I don't know how well that's working, but. I don't know, what is, what is he doing over there? You know what, his opponent's got to hurry up and get out here because I'm getting sick and tired of looking at this face. Yeah. And his opponent. Thank you. From Cape Cod at a weight of 202 pounds. He is El Americano TK. Ladies and gentlemen, this place has just exploded right now. We have got TK Orion, Ring of Honor, alumni, and three-time world six-man tag team champion alongside Vinny Marseglia, the current CWE champion, and yep. Matt Taven. Of course, that's what you were going to say, though. That's exactly what I was going to say. Thank you very much. If I wouldn't have a broadcast call dig like you, I don't know what I would have. You know what? Thank you. I, I will forgive you for that, that little mistake. I but appreciate now that. Now I want to reiterate what I was saying earlier, where Norman may be a pretty face, but I'm not reading PWE ranks 181 in 2018. I'm not reading six-man tag team champion. These are all things that, that TKO Ryan has accomplished already compared to Norman's failed modeling career. Well, we got to remember here still that Norman Harris, he is a young guy still making his way up through the ranks. And this is going to be a great matchup to see how well he can do against a superstar like TKO Ryan. Yeah, when you got pretty faces in WWE doing so well like Tyler Breeze. What's he doing now? The, the, <laughs> exactly. That's what I'm saying. Maybe he should focus on the scrapping aspect of it. Oh, wait a minute. He's getting a microphone. I want to hear what this guy's got to say. Hold on, hold on. Hey, excuse me. Uh, I don't know if you guys know this, but I'm not from around here. Could anyone please point out my opponent for the evening? Is he hiding in the seats? Uh, he's hey, not in the seats. Uh, he, it looks hey, like he's hey, up hey, on top hey, of the bar. How you doing, buddy? Hey, Norman. Hey, listen. 
That guy sucks their chanting. How can they even say, have they even seen him wrestle? We're in Sault Ste. Hey, Marie, we're smart fans here. We know Norman sucks. Is Norman I'll give really you that. Awesome? Hold on, wait a minute, I'm sorry. Listen, you guys got it. I'm sorry. I have been on the road for a very long time. My hearing's a little messed up. Is that guy over there awesome? Okay, 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 how about this, how about this? Yeah, Norman, I don't think you get paid to this? clean those tables. Does that guy over there suck? Oh, that hey, seems to have riled hey, up Norman already. Hey. He is he is looking hot oh. right now. Oh, and the fans getting in on it. Get Referee him, security. Get him, Doris. Hey. Somebody hey, needs to get in there hey, and break that uh, referee hey, security. Somebody relax. needs to make sure she stays hey, on the sidelines. Listen, Norman, we can put all this behind us and we can have ourselves a pro wrestling match unless Norman over here is a chicken. Oh, here we go. Even for me, that's a low blow. Calling somebody a chicken? Come on. And the crowd in on it. They are chanting chicken right now, people. Oh, what is Norman going to do? Is he is he going to actually get into the ring, or do we just see him walking out? What is going to happen here tonight? Oh, Norman Harris right now telling the fans to shut up. I mean, majority of the fans here are children, so a grown man saying fans here to, 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 to tell them to shut up. What, what kind of man are you? A pretty big guy to be on, like what, 110 <laughs> kilograms? That's, uh, that's pretty big. Yeah, that is a pretty big boy. I yeah. actually saw him walking a little bit prior to the show and uh, I'm gonna just stay behind this commentary desk and do all my chirping from back here because I don't think I wanna do it to his face. <laughs> Definitely not, definitely not. It looks as though he is going to be getting into this ring here. And a hand extended. Well. Coming from Ring of Honor, mm -hmm. yes, the Code of Honor, even in Canadian wrestling's elite, the Code of Honor is something that should be there because we are Canadian, mm -hmm. that's what we do. There we go, you love to and see the it. Handshake. Oh, wait a minute, oh. he tried to pull a fast one. And the bell has rung, people. This match is underway. We've got some classic arm bars going on here right now, and the fans are eating this up mm. right now. Targeting that left arm early on, too. Oh, Ooh. and down to the mat, Norman Harris goes. TKO Ryan getting the upper hand in that exchange. Back to the arm bar again here. Norman oh, a swing and a miss, and then a swing and on. a hit. Well, I think that just goes to show you, if you want to cheat to win, maybe that'll come to bite you. It very well could. Nice classic moves going on right here. And another Ooh. chop from TK to Harris. I felt that on my chest here, and I'm sitting back 10 feet. Ladies and gentlemen, being in that professional wrestling ring myself before, I can tell you that hurts and especially coming from a seasoned veteran like TKO Ryan. Norman trying to work on some offense here. Oh, oh. going for a suplex. Hook the leg though. Trying again. Up and over. Into the headlock, off the ropes, oh. over top. Here we go, a little, oh, and a nice drop oh. kick. Norman Harris almost to the outside. Almost to the outside, got caught up there a little bit. I think that might have played to his advantage though. Uh, I think so, a little bit. Only a two count there. Well, I mean, you were a wrestler. How bad does it feel? What would you rather hit, the canvas or the hardwood floor? I would rather hit the canvas yeah. than that hardwood exactly. floor any day. Trying to get the fans on his side now, TKO Ryan. Oh. oh, and Norman Harris makes his way outside of the ring. Yeah, that's what you get when you're pretty. You're a coward. You got to protect that face, huh? That's right, always. Fans coming back, shouting chicken again. Oh, one for the elbow drop, a missed. Nice deep arm drag there, and another arm drag. Can he get the trios? Wait. I don't think he wants it. 
Does he want a high five? What are you doing, man? You got a wrestling match to wrestle. Oh, oh. what is going to happen here? And <laughs> I, I mean, he may be pretty and I may not like him, but he is using oh. the rules to his advantage. Smart move. He did the cheap shot from Norman Harris there. I wouldn't call it cheap. I think he's just being smart. The ref can't see. Guess what? It's not going to hurt him. It was a cheap shot. Call it like it is. The fans just not supporting Norman at all here tonight. Oh, and a hard chop. Hard chop to the chest. Yeah, for a guy's first offensive move of the night, and he should, he's milking it like that, yeah, he's probably got to get his priority straight there. Yeah, it's very possible, but you never know in this business. Oh. Never say never in the professional wrestling business, people. We could see Norman Harris win this. Oh, and another hard chop and takes TK Orion to the ground. Finally, a wrestler smart enough to realize that if that shirt comes off, it'll do more damage. So you know what? Hats off to, uh. That's right. Oh, look I at how ravishing soon. this is. Norman, I'm trying to give you props here, and now you're doing this? Oh, what a heart throb. Oh, and only a two count we have got right there. Norman looking a little frustrated now. Yeah, I mean, I think he's been complaining all match. Maybe he's got some anger management issues to deal with after this because he's taking it on the fans, he's taking it on the ref, TK Ryan. Sometimes you got to point the finger at yourself. You're right, sometimes you do. This might be one of those. Oh, and another hard chop. Ric Flair would be My very goodness. proud of this match. Wow. Oh, and Ooh. going for a knee drop, and Miss TK Orion rolling out of the way, and looks like he might be building up some speed. Here we go, TK Orion back on the offensive with a chop himself. Uh, little uppercut there from Norman. Little was right. Oh, catches the big boot. Who's got the advantage? Takes him down. Oh, but he's right there on the ropes. TKO Ryan, you are not looking like a man that be defeated SoCal Uncensored as a part of Ring of Honor New Japan War of the Worlds. What happened? A year's time goes by and you just forget the basics to wrestling? I don't think he's forgotten any type of basics at all. This is a different type of breed in Norman Harris that he's trying to take on here. Big Ooh. drop kick from the top rope and a cover. Yeah, I didn't and think only he got all of that one. He did not get all of it, and it was evident in only a two count. Mm -hmm. Now, Norman, exactly what he needed to do from the start. Don't showboat because you hit a move. Get right back on that offense. Now, maybe Norman's got a chance. That is smart. Very smart on his part. I do give you that. The pace slowed down a little bit here. Oh, oh. look at that. A boy. Just muscling him down mm -hmm. to the ground. And I mean, for Norman Harris, if he can pull off a win here, which I mean, I don't think he can, this would be huge for his career. Beating a guy like TK Ryan with the accolades he has, I mean, I wonder what that can do for a guy's career. That could do a world of wonders for a career of Norman Harris, especially beating somebody as decorated as TK Ryan. TK Ryan on the offense again. Can't get the discus clothesline, but can't oh, get the nice, big knee off the rebound. Nice high knee going on. And taking him to the ropes. Maybe not. Keeping a hand locked in. Blocks the right hand. Swirl around. Oh, a backbreaker. My goodness. And a big Huge. European uppercut. Huge. Down to the mat. Oh, And only a two count. How, how is that even possible? Come on, TKO. Going He's high res. Using the to his advantage. Or maybe not. It might have stopped him up just enough for Norman oh. to get a European uppercut of his own. Huge from the Hamburg heartthrob. Huge uppercut. A German suplex. I mean, we should have saw that one coming. Oh, but and only a two count. I wonder what his fans back home in Germany have to say to that one. You know, over in Germany, they just call it a suplex. <laughs> How long did you take to think, you, think of that one? Oh, I've known that all my life. Oh, oh my goodness, that's and, it, and oh, oh, make it stop, ah! That was a quick Ow. tap out right there. 
Ah! Oh my goodness. Get the trainer! Ah! The winner of this match, by form of top out, Alameda Crowder! And as much as Norman Harris really milked it at the start, I have to say he did put on a great match and what a barn burner first match for CWEs. The Juice is on the loose tour stop in Sault Ste. Marie. Definitely, this is an amazing tour. Danny and the team keep coming back and we are so happy about it. Ladies and gentlemen, right now though, I have a special treat for you all. We are gonna have Joe the Shiv Shivarelli come and take over my spot on commentary for this next match. People, a legend in this business in Sault Ste. Marie as well. You're gonna see him later tonight in that main event match, brother versus brother. Ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Game Sports Show, and I can't get enough of these fantastic graphics. Just a fantastic graphic. Thank you for the graphic, Jake, Alex, mm -hmm. our producer Jake Moore, always doing a great job here on the Game Sports Aaron Show. Aaron Alessandrini. Yes. Beautiful. Yes. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. I know forget. he can hear us right now too. He's over there while we're recording. I like that. Now, Alex, in the pocket time, and you did the catch when I threw it mm -hmm. on the part, always on part three. Wait, did, did you just throw it again? Yeah, I, I I overthrew it. You're like old Al Beckham. Let's talk about old Al Beckham. Quickly. Yeah, uh, you know what? Yeah, we're okay. Camera to Alex. Please. Alex to camera. Odell Beckham, kick us off. So, in this segment, I never thought that Antonio Brown was back in the league, but I guess he's playing for the Browns in a number 13 jersey because we got a new clown in the NFL. <laughs> right. Odell Beckham, what have you done in your career? Oh, you made one flashy catch and you were on the cover of Madden 16. What else? Oh, you got overpaid. You wind out in New York because you didn't want to play with Eli anymore, so now you're on the Browns, and ooh, the Browns aren't doing so good. So now you're stopping taking huddles with the team, you're telling other teams after the game when you're shaking hands that you're ready to go. Jimmy G said he's got a spot for you. What do you want? What, what is it you want? Do you want to just cakewalk to the finals? Here, why don't you join the Patriots for a season, win one ring, and get out of the league? Get out of the league. If you want to do it the cheap and easy way, there's your perfect path to do it. You're a clown, you're a joke. Stick it out with the Browns, man. Stick it out with the Browns. Antonio Brown tried the quick sign to go somewhere. Yeah, but and he did the whole like, honk honk, I'm a yeah. clown too. I like. Oh, and Antonio Brown is probably never going to play in the NFL again. Yeah, but Antonio Brown's done more than catch one ball. Oh yeah, he's been probably the best receiver. He's caught. Yeah. He's won a Super Bowl. He. Well, what? Oh no! What, what have you done? <laughs> I'm sorry, but winners and people that have proven track records. They've got a little bit more wiggle room to be a little bit more barky. And that's why teams still wanted Antonio Brown at the time. I don't think you're going to carry as much weight as a guy as Antonio Brown there, Mr. Odell Beckham Jr. Odell Beckham uh, JR. Dot. And you got to wear number 13 with pride. That's a good number to wear. That's all I got to say. That's all I'll say about it. I don't have to say anything about Odell. You already got me there. Not taking huddles with team, that's poor sportsmanship. Yep. They have positive sportsmanship. Telling. Give hope to the Browns. That city is craving to win. Like, I can't, I can't, I feel so bad. They're almost worse than Lions fans. No offense. Uh, like, you guys are really craving a championship. At least you had the Wings win. The Tigers did all right for some time. The Pistons okay. didn't win that yeah. long ago. No. Like, you know, you got a little, a little taste, okay? Cleveland got one championship with LeBron James. Okay? <laughs> well, LeBron, I just nailed that three if anyone saw my pretend paper. <laughs> Okay, the and Cleveland the Browns net. have been brutal. Okay, brutal. They've sucked booty. They've went through more quarterbacks. Okay, than how many games Tom Brady has almost played in the league? That's wrong. That's an incorrect stat. Don't listen to that. Okay, but I'm just saying. Have you ever heard the Cleveland frowns? The Cleveland frowns. Yes. <laughs> The Cleveland, Cleveland Browns, does frown, Dave. Cleveland Browns are a dumpster fire. That's what the song is. <laughs> That's what the song is. I'm not even kidding. Look it up on YouTube, and it's a reference to how many quarterbacks they've used since Tom Brady has entered the league. Okay? And, and they're not, though. This team has a promising future. You have hope. Baker Mayfield. 
I actually thought Odell would be some Nick Chubb. The kid's awesome. Miles Garrett before he decided to hit somebody in the head with a helmet. Bonehead move. But nonetheless, you have a promising team in future. So be 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 happy, Browns fans. Don't frown. There it is. And nonetheless, okay, Odell Beckham support this team. He's not. He's not. He's not. He's not. But he's not. Anyways, Clown. next next topic to jump into. And as my phone goes off at the same time while we're talking, as I said, Odell Beckham. Apparently, Google thinks it's Odell. Yeah, I was giving us tickets to the circus. <laughs> Saints and 49ers lived up to the hype. That's all I'm going to say. We're talking about that tomorrow a oh, lot. I, I, one okay, quick mention okay, on that. Okay, Monday damaged. Night Football. Why am I watching the Giants and the Eagles? Put on the Niners and the Saints. That was the best football game I've seen all season. And you okay. don't flex that till Monday? You give us the Giants and the Eagles? Yes. 48, 46. Look at some of the action here on the on the screen. Great graphic by our crew, especially with Jake Moore doing fantastic things. Vikings, Lions. Sorry, Lions fans. It's time to clean house. Steelers, Cardinals, and Packers. That's not a convincing win over the Redskins. That, man. that, that is not a convincing win. One thing win. that I love there, the Chiefs over the Patriots. Mm -hmm. New England is human. Okay, they, they they're human. Okay, <sighs> definitely vent. Lions losing again, though. We got, we're talking about that more on Wednesday. We talked about it a lot on Monday. But going into week 15, mm -hmm. the Patriots play the Bengals. Oh, please, Bengals. Let's go, Dalton. Okay, if you pull that win, okay, I'll, I'll think of something to get excited for the Bengals. Maybe I'll wear a Bengals hat. Can, we, wear, can we get, like, some confetti and, like, pop it open pop on it the up. show? Okay, they're, they're human. And Tom Brady's not happy right now. Not a happy guy. <laughs> oh, I don't know how you can't be when you have the gauntlet on your hands. Well, just go get Odell Beckham. Steelers riding momentum, playing the third-string quarterback. We know why they're winning football games. Defense stepping up. Players are stepping up. Good teams find ways to win. Wow. It's so great how that concept works. <gasps> You're right, are they, they do. Are they a good team? I don't, I'm not going to push that they're a playoff team yet, but okay. they're grinding it out. They are grinding it out. And that's what you do as a unit, Odell. Steelers riding momentum for sure. Game mm -hmm. of the week for me this week, going nonetheless here. I had a close call between the Texans and Titans. Titans are for real. Mm -hmm. This team is for real. Derrick Henry, Tannehill. Love it, Tannehill. You keep throwing in the Dolphins' faces there. Steelers and Bills are my game of the week. Big imperative game for the Steelers. The Bills have a chance to keep climbing the division, especially the Patriots somehow lose to the Bengals. Okay, it'd be very surprising. Imagine mm -hmm. the Bills can overtake the Patriots for the division. If you, Stretch wow. an imagination, wow. but it's not it's not too far-fetched. What's your game of the week? Well, this isn't going to be really a game of the week for a lot of people, but for my Packers fans, nope. we're going to be biting our nails watching the Chargers and the Vikings. We need yeah, a little a bit high, more. High-scoring game last yeah. game the Chargers. We need more breathing room because we only have a game up on, on the Vikings in that NFC North standings. Mm -hmm. A little bit of breathing room. The Chargers, mm -hmm. please. Friend of the show, Callum, help me out. Tell your team. Fly down there. Tell them. Kick it up a notch and beat those Vikings for me. I gotta say something. The Cowboys division sucks too, man. Oh. Like that division <sighs> makes me not like playoff format, but then oh, what are you gonna, it's gonna happen. Uh, it's gonna happen. Baseball, hockey, it doesn't matter where it goes. Okay, but oh, like Cowboys, you still might finish first in your division. Okay, I can't believe it. <laughs> you, you might finish under five hundred and, and win the division. First. Yeah. That's unbelievable. That's 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 unheard of. And by the way, the the reason why Jason Garrett still has a job mm. right now is because they're in playoffs at the end of the season when they get eliminated in the first round potentially by the way they're playing sorry cowboy fans unless you really snap out of it and surprise everybody garrett's gonna be bye-bye in the off season I'm telling you right now going to thumbs up right now i'm gonna give my thumbs up one thing that we didn't have time to mention uh layla anderson's opening video on hockey night in canada check out our facebook page how he, she said here at leaf fans here's a reason for hope Mm -hmm. Oh, I had I I for some reason I hope everyone watched that. Is that why Toronto played good against St. Louis? I did, and uh, oh, it's been like what fifty plus years now. Yeah, Trust me, hope hope ain't enough anymore. And another hope thumbs up, enough. though, big thumbs up here. Like if I can do all my thumbs, toes. Bianca Drescu winning the Lou Marsh Award for Canada's top athletes. Duh, unanimous, of course, had and to, had to. Well, and one other thing too, I gotta say, our Facebook following has increased amazingly. Over hundreds of new followers on our Facebook and Instagram oh page. Fantastic to see. Keep supporting us, and we'll keep supporting everything that we can locally and provide you with the best content that we can. Alex, what about your thumbs up for the week? Do you have one? I just no. took three of them right there. Yeah, you took three of them. Yeah, I was going to go Bianca. Bianca? Yeah, I was going to go Bianca. Bianca. Definitely. Great moment for Bianca and for Canada. Is that it? Am I done yelling now? You're done yelling. <sighs> Next show, tomorrow, Sports Center Bar and Grill. Myself and the usual crew. We're crewed in to have Justin Heichel and Jamie Antonello join us all through via Skype. And Matt Primo, 
And then on Thursday, be myself, Dane, and Alex, and potentially Justin as well. We got some more big shows coming up, and I know he can attest to that by some big guests that we have coming on the show in the very near future. Be sure to follow us on our website, Podbean page, and Instagram, social media, Facebook pages. Soon to be on Spotify, Apple as well. We'll give you the uploads when that happens. Thank you for listening to the game. Thanks for watching the game sports show, the Twin Cities Only Look Region National Sports Show, powered by On TV here on our Tuesday edition. We'll talk to you tomorrow night from Sports Center Bar and Grill. Have a great night. Booyah.